uh, tell us a little bit about this film uh, or the premise of the film. Okay, the film uh, Super Grid. It's kind of like a post-apocalyptic action adventure film. It's uh, set in Saskatchewan, and basically the idea is it's this futuristic world where there's a border between Canada and the U.S. and uh, <laughs> there's like you know uh, states and provinces have been sold off to China and uh, to Japan for like fracking purposes and other uh, mining purposes. So. Uh, basically, you don't go out on the highway. You stay in the city, and if you're going on the highway, it's almost like the high seas where there's going to be pirates, people are going to kill you. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, lots of earthquakes and stuff. And the movie is about these two brothers who go out on the highway, and they have to do a dangerous cargo run. And uh, it's uh, it's probably likely that they'll die if they do this mission, but if they don't do the mission, some bad guys are going to kill them. Oh, yeah. so, well, of course. So yeah. It's a lose-lose situation, basically. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the uh, the casting process in the film. Uh, and this your movie, experience with yeah, it. Yeah, this movie was uh, it was brought to me by uh, a buddy of mine, Hugh Patterson, who produced uh, the two. He's a producer on two of the Wolfcock films, and he had been developing this. And when he got it, uh, he he brought me on to direct, and he had already promised uh, some roles to the Wolfcock people. So it was a lot Great. of the same familiar faces, which was good. And uh, so it, it's a weird mix of like people who were, uh, you know, the cast of Wolfcock, but also with some new faces and uh, people peppered throughout, like actors like Daniel Bislani and Natalie Krill and Faye Wren and uh, uh, the WWE wrestler uh, Christian uh, J. Rizzo. So it's a it's a cool mix. Yeah. Now Wolfcock and I'm sorry Wolfcock and Wolfcock Two are pretty known called classics now. And like, do you feel that there's an expectation? with this film to to match it or yeah it's it's weird uh, for me it's like wolf cop and wolf cop 2 i wrote so it's like those are you know i feel very connected to them it's super good i didn't write but it's written and, and produced and, and very saskatchewan so i feel a big connection to it and i feel like it's its own thing in a way you know like i i don't want it to be uh, just another wolf cop which i think a lot of people sometimes expect because it's a lot yeah. of the same cast and me and it's in saskatchewan but the fun part for us, I think, was having so many familiar people, but um, trying to break out of the mold and uh, not do the expected, and maybe make a movie that's a little more, dare I say, serious. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, filming in Saskatchewan, uh, comment a little bit about that and uh, the advantages of actually filming in Saskatchewan. Yeah, it's actually really uh, aside from like Toronto, right? <laughs> it's actually there. There are definite pros and definite cons to making movies in Saskatchewan. Um, we don't have a tax credit, so it really impacts the level of budget of films we can make. If you're, you can't really do anything with a budget higher than one million. Um, luckily, our last few films have been kind of in that wheelhouse, so uh, we've been able to make films there. But um, you know, we don't have the most experienced crew necessarily. Uh, we're losing a lot of good people to bigger centers like Toronto. But um, but there's definitely like a down home spirit in Saskatchewan and a can do attitude, and you can really often pull off things that I think would be almost impossible in larger centers, where you know the amount of stuff you can get away with and roads you can block off and things you can blow up. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crazy. Now you said you you have the WWF uh, sorry WWE uh, uh, former wrestler Christian. Um, tell us what what's that like to work with him? I had no idea what to expect from Jay Rezo. Uh, I I knew that he was uh, a famous wrestler, and I knew that he had like an interesting role. And the, the character is kind of like it's this character named Curtis, and we don't know if he's good or bad. And it's a big part. And. Uh, I'm always nervous anytime I'm working with someone I don't really know much about. But he came highly recommended, and on his first day he had like basically like a five-page monologue, and I was like, "Well, we'll know pretty quickly what this guy's made of." And um, and he blew me away. Like he he you know not not saying like knowing your lines is you know a thing, but not only did he know all his lines, he knew everyone's lines. He could uh, deliver them over and over with gravity and character and heart. So it's like it's like uh, you know because sometimes. Sometimes you get someone who, you know, can be a good actor, but maybe can't memorize five pages of dialogue, right. and uh, you're in trouble. You're not going to make your day. And right. and not only was he good, but he was prepared. And, and those two things combined means you're going places. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, now they talk about the uh, festival circuit. You know, I know here in Blood in the Snow, Kirk was mentioning this after uh, actually this afternoon that it was it was hard, it was difficult for them to get one of your movies in, in their festival and such. Uh, can you uh, perhaps like talk about uh, you know uh, 
the actual fight for films in, in certain festivals and such. Yeah, it's, it's not really something I know much about. For me, it's usually like I make the film and then people just tell me where it's going to be playing. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, cool. And, uh, but I do know that I had talked to the Blood and the Snow guys um, multiple times in the last few years. And, uh, you know, I think they wanted to program the Wolf Cop films, but they usually had... Um, a preset place where they were going to play or they were going to be in the theater in Cineplex theaters so um, they have commitments and things like that but um, this is the first time where we made a film and I think maybe because it's a little different and it's not so crazy genre uh, a lot of people are like we don't know what to do with this film you know it's not a monster film it's not a horror and uh, I think what's cool is Blood in the Snow um, we're still willing to take a risk on it and be like you know we like you guys as filmmakers and you know even though this isn't a, a horror film uh, it has a place at Blood in the Snow. Nice. Uh, tell us how it feels to be here at Blood in the Snow, finally. It feels great. Uh, everybody's been really welcoming and they've kind of invited us into the fold. And um, This is my first time actually at Blood in the Snow, but uh, I love the Royal Cinema. I, I've you know, had movies play there. I go there all the time when I'm in town. They always have great programming, so uh, I'm just excited to get to see the movie with an audience and see it there, um, surrounded by like-minded filmmakers. Yeah.